Hello everyone. Today I'm super excited to show you the new 2024 iPad Air 13-inch. I have an iPad Pro 2020 11-inch. I plan to upgrade my iPad last year, but as everybody knows, Apple didn't release any new iPad in 2023. I guess for people like me who already decide to go for an upgrade, has quite a lot of expectations on the new iPad. This year, Apple released the new iPad Pro, iPad Air, and the iPad 10th generation along with some accessories like Apple Pencil Pro. I was actually thinking of getting an iPad Pro, but the biggest update, which is a thinner iPad with the M4 chip, doesn't really convince me to make a commitment to something that is quite expensive. I'm pretty sure the M4 chip sounds super exciting for those who run a lot of big apps on their iPad. As I only use my iPad for digital planning, note taking, drawing and creating, streaming videos, and I don't really play video games, I feel like the new iPad Air should work well for me. Okay, I guess the main reason why I went for the new iPad Air is because it's now available in 13 inch. I've been pretty happy with my 11 inch iPad Pro, but I really want to try a bigger screen for digital planning. Had it still made the iPad Air only available in 11 inch, I would have got a Pro instead. So the new iPad Air I got is purple. I think what makes Air a little more exciting than Pro is its color options. It comes in space gray, straight light, purple, and blue, whereas the Pro is always only available in the neutral colors, space gray and silver. If you're like me, always have the neutral ones before, it's kind of exciting to try new color. My old iPad Pro is silver. As you can see, the purple is really subtle. If I don't put them side by side, it's kind of hard to tell this is purple. Anyway, I do like this silver purple on my new iPad Air. It looks quite sleek. The new iPad Air 13 inch is obviously heavier than my 11 inch old iPad Pro, but it's not that a big difference for me. Perhaps I don't need to carry my iPad around, but if lightweight is your top consideration and you don't really need a bigger screen, the 11 inch iPad may work better for you. The new iPad Air is now available in more storage options. I went for 256 gigabytes. The same as my old iPad Pro, I feel 256 is well enough for my everyday needs. Okay, now I want to talk about the most exciting thing about the new iPad Air, which is the M2 chip. Apple says it's nearly 50% faster than the previous generation. To give you a sense of how fast this new iPad Air you can expect, let me put it this way, my iMac with the M1 chip which I bought back in 2021, still runs pretty fast and can handle a lot of big apps like Photoshop, InDesign, Premiere Pro at the same time. So that means the M2 chip should make the new iPad Air a very decent device for handling big apps and video gaming. My 2020 iPad Pro still runs smoothly, but occasionally I can tell it lasts a little bit. It's not a big deal though, so I guess in terms of performance, the new iPad Air should be well enough for most people. Another big change is the front camera. So for the previous iPads, the front camera used to be at the top in portrait mode, but now it's moved to the top in landscape mode. This change applies to both the new iPad Pro and iPad Air. It kind of makes sense when it comes to Face ID to unlock the iPad or video calls. Speaking of Face ID, the iPad Air does not do Face ID, so you unlock the iPad with Touch ID instead. Actually, this Face ID unlocking thing doesn't work very well for me, maybe because I mostly do digital planning on my iPad and I always turn on my iPad when it's on the desk. So I feel like every time I have to purposely hold it in front of me so it can unlock. Honestly, I'm pretty happy with Touch ID on the new iPad Air. As for the rear camera, iPad Pro obviously has a more advanced one compared with iPad Air. 
Even my old 2020 iPad Pro has a better rear camera than the new 2024 iPad Air. But honestly, I never use my iPad to take photos and I doubt how many people would actually use their iPad to take photos. In terms of battery life, there's no much significant improvement. Actually, the new iPad Air just has similar battery life to my old 2020 iPad Pro. Even the new iPad Pro just has similar battery life to its previous generations. I really would love to see Apple will bring us some good news about longer battery life in the future. The new Apple Pencil Pro only works with the new iPad Pro and iPad Air. So if you want to use it, you have to get either the new iPad Pro or iPad Air. This is the new Apple Pencil Pro and here's my old Apple Pencil 2nd generation. They look almost the same except that the new one says Pencil Pro. The new Apple Pencil Pro comes with a bunch of new features. Possibly the most exciting feature is the squeeze feature. Here's how it works. When you squeeze the bottom of the pencil, it brings up a toolbar in apps like GoodNotes, Freeform. If you long press the undo button here, it brings up the history. You can undo or redo to the exact step, which is very convenient. The squeeze feature is also customizable in the settings. For example, you can customize it to squeeze to switch between the current tool or the razor. What makes this feature possibly more useful than you think is that you can connect it to a shortcut. So when you squeeze it, it'll do whatever the linked shortcut does. Say the open app shortcut, it can quickly bring up the app you set in this shortcut. Another exciting feature is barrel roll. It basically changes the orientation of a shape pen and brush tool when you rotate the pencil. So you have more control of what you draw. Also, you can see what the pen is going to look like before you touch it down on the screen. So you can see the shape, the orientation, and the size of the pen beforehand. This simply makes it easier to draw. I think this is going to be super helpful for artists and calligraphers. The next feature is the haptic feedback. So what it does is when you squeeze or tap, it vibrates and confirms the action. For example, in Procreate, when you move an object to snap into alignment, it vibrates to let you know this is done right. The last new feature is you can add the Apple Pencil Pro to the Find My App so it's easier to find it when you lost it. Apple released the brand new Magic Keyboard just for the new iPad Pro. For the new iPad Air, if you've already got a Magic Keyboard, the good news is it fits the new iPad Air. The new Magic Keyboard for the new iPad Pro M4 is basically the same as the old Magic Keyboard. The difference is the new one has function keys at the top. I have a smart keyboard folio for my 2020 iPad Pro. I've been using it for digital planning and I'm quite happy with it, but it doesn't have a trackpad. So for my new iPad Air, I still can't decide whether I should get a magic keyboard for it since it's not cheap and I don't really need to carry my iPad around. So for the time being, I'll use the third-party keyboard and see how it goes. Should you get a new iPad? Here's my thoughts. The new iPad Air with the M2 chip is no doubt a powerful device. I absolutely love it, especially the bigger screen, which is the main reason why I bought it. So if you're like me, who has an old iPad in a smaller size and really want to try a bigger size, you can consider upgrading to the new iPad Air 13 inch or the new iPad Pro 13 inch, depending on your budget. So the new iPad Pro 11 inch starts from $999, 13 inch starts from $1299. Whereas the iPad Air 11 inch starts from $599, 30 inch starts from $799. Just to give you a sense of the performance difference, my old 2020 iPad Pro still works very well for my everyday needs like digital planning, note taking, 
drawing, photo editing, video streaming, etc. So if you are quite happy with your current iPad, there seems no need to upgrade unless you have a very old iPad. And as for choosing between the iPad Air and iPad Pro, I think the new iPad Air is well enough for most people who don't need to run a lot of crazy apps on iPad. I hope this video helps. Let me know what you guys think about the new iPads. Thank you so much for watching this video. 